Tonight, some 1,800 people have been forced from their homes with no idea when they may return. I'm really proud of our people and how much love we really do have here for each other. In 2018, Hawaii's lush forests and pristine beaches suddenly transformed into a fiery inferno, spewing molten lava and ash into the air. The Kilauea eruption was a devastating reminder of the raw power of nature. But what caused it? Some have speculated that increased fracking activity in the region may have played a role. Is there any truth to this claim or is it just a myth? In this video, we will dive deep into the science to explore this fascinating topic. Join us as we separate facts from fiction and uncover the truth about whether fracking is to blame for the volcanic activity in Hawaii. Fracking, short for hydraulic fracturing, is a technique used to extract oil and gas from deep underground rock formations. It involves injecting large amounts of water, sand, and chemicals at high pressure into the ground to fracture the rock and release the trapped oil and gas. While fracking has become a significant industry worldwide, it has also been controversial due to concerns about its environmental impacts, including potential links to earthquakes and water contamination. And some believe that this suggests something much more sinister. Many experts worldwide argue that fracking operations in Hawaii may have been intentionally designed to trigger a geological process that would cause Kilauea's lava to drain into the East Rift Zone, creating massive new vents and destabilizing the region's geology. The result, a catastrophic collapse in the Helena Fault System. The main focus of today's exploration will be Dr. Michael E. Sala, an eminent researcher, keynote speaker, and best-selling author in the field of exopolitics. We will delve into his theory about the scientific data that points towards fracking as the cause of the Hawaiian eruptions and the underlying reasons and the parties responsible for them. A video produced by the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center provides compelling evidence to support this theory. It clearly shows that the epicenter of earthquake activity in the lower Puna region is right next to the Puna Geothermal Venture. A map from this video illustrates the location of all the earthquakes and the eruption site, revealing a troubling correlation between the location of the fracking operation and the recent lava outbreak. Could this be a coincidence or is something more sinister at play? Here's another photo showing the lava outbreak in its proximity to the Puna Geothermal Venture. Dr. Sala previously wrote about how the fracking activity of PGV has been scientifically linked to earthquakes. He included the following diagram, which clearly showed the strong correlation. Another article by Dr. Sala touched upon the Helena slump and its possible connection to the Pune Geothermal Venture PGV fracking activities. This assertion has faced considerable criticism in the comments section of the video. However, Dr. Sala argues that scientific evidence indicates that earthquake activity is linked to the Helena Fault System movements. The map illustrates the location of the Helena Fault System concerning the East Rift Zone, highlighting the significance of this geological feature in understanding the potential impacts of human activities on the region's stability. The following map produced by the Hawaii Volcano Observatory shows how the recent earthquake led to the Helena slump slipping towards the Pacific Ocean Observatory. The photo above was explained by the Berkeley Seismology Lab, which clarified that while earthquakes beneath the summit and the eastern end of the rift zone are caused by magma movement, the massive event and its aftershocks under the Pali have a distinct origin. The map shows the displacement of permanent GPS stations operated by the Hawaii Volcano Observatory in response to the 6.9 magnitude earthquake. The red arrows indicate the direction of horizontal motion all directed towards the southeast, with the length of each arrow corresponding to the extent of the motion. The longest arrows represent a movement of over six feet. This shift reveals that the cliff flank on the southern coast of Hawaii has moved even closer to the ocean. However, they did not mention that the 6.9 magnitude earthquake was triggered by the massive outflow of lava from the Kilauea summit Halemaumau crater into the East Rift Zone. The volcanic eruption in the lower Puna region, where the Puna geothermal venture is located, is being fueled by fresh lava from the summit of Kilauea, which is being drained towards it. While it began slowly as old lava oozed out of the new volcanic fissures in Lania states, the recent upsurge resulted from the fresh new lava from the Kilauea summit. The following diagram shows the dynamics of the lava flows linking Kilauea summit, the Puo'o vent, and the East Rift zone. 
According to an article published in Ars Technica by Scott Johnson, the process behind Kilauea's volcanic activity can be explained as follows. The main magma chamber is located a few kilometers below Halima-Uma'u crater at the summit of the volcano. When the fresh magma is injected from beneath the lava lake in Halima-Uma'u crater rises, the internal conduits and crevices form Kilauea's plumbing system, stretching from the summit region to the east rift zone. Consequently, as lava ascends in Halima-Uma'u crater, it sometimes flows back down as the new magma moves towards the eastern portion of the volcano. As the following diagram of the East Rift Zone illustrates, lava flows the path of least resistance in a highly pressurized environment. Dr. Sala theorized that some would have been aware from the inception of the PGV in 1993 that the process of using highly pressurized water on subterranean rocks, also known as fracking, severely compromises the underground environment. This would effectively open up a new path for lava to flow from the Kilauea summit and the Puo vent. So where does fracking come into all of this? Dr. Sala has put forth a thought-provoking argument challenging the widely accepted notion that the recent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions on Hawaii's Big Island are purely natural occurrences. Specifically, Dr. Sala has analyzed the fracking practices at the Pune Geothermal Power Station, located in the same region affected by the earthquakes and volcanic activity, and has suggested that these practices may have directly contributed to the current situation. Moreover, the fact that the company operating the PGV is financially linked to the Rothschild family has raised even more alarm. According to QAnon, the Rothschilds lead a worldwide satanic cult that covertly causes global catastrophes and wars to maintain its grip on power. And from the PGV's inception, there has been controversy over the wisdom of the Pune geothermal venture being built within an active volcanic region with regularly occurring lava flows. However, multiple studies have found a connection between fracking and earthquake activity. A study by the University of California Santa Cruz from July 27, 2013 confirmed the correlation between geothermal fracking and earthquakes. And a 2013 study by the National Research Council concluded that geothermal drilling causes earthquakes. Despite claims at Paipuna Geothermal Venture that fracking has not been used, independent studies suggest otherwise, according to Dr. Sala. Duke University conducted a study of eight wells used by PGV and suggested evidence of fracking through the injection of pressurized fluids into the wells and surrounding rocks. The study also noted that the areas of highest fluid production at PGV were consistent with the region of high fracture density, suggesting that fracking was occurring in that area. A study of earthquake activity near Kilauea shows a direct correlation to the fluid injection fracking at the geothermal plant, as illustrated by the following graph using scientific data. The study reveals a clear link between the injection of fluids or fracking practices of Pune Geothermal Venture and the induced earthquakes in Kilauea's East Rift Zone that have been ongoing for several years. It raises the question of whether this earthquake activity was accidental or intentionally created. This video illustrates the devastating tsunamis that a partial or total collapse of the Helena slump could cause. Dr. Sala's theory is that the creation of a massive tsunami through the collapse of the Helena slump was the secret purpose behind the creation of the Pune geothermal venture. He believes the Rothschild family has chosen China as the hub for the kind of new world order that the global elite would like to emerge. That would be an openly authoritarian state where AI technology monitors citizens and quickly removes troublemakers expressing dissenting political views. Now, Snopes is a website specializing in fact-checking and is recognized for its ability to dispel online urban legends and rumors. The website has examined Dr. Sala's theory and analyzed its validity. According to Snopes, the assertions made by Dr. Sala and ExoPolitics are riddled with factual, scientific, and logical flaws. One major issue with their argument is that fracking is not practiced in Hawaii as there are no oil reserves to extract. The country also banned fracking on October 16, 2013 because of concerns about the potential environmental impacts of the technique. Hawaii made this decision even though it has no known oil or natural gas reserves. To overcome this argument, ExoPolitics argues that the reinjection process used at PGV is similar to fracking because it involves injecting fluids into the ground. However, this is incorrect as reinjection at PGV is to stabilize the ground and prevent sinkholes or faults. 
In contrast, fracking aims to destabilize rocks and create faults using fluids, some organic compounds, at high pressure. Hawaiian Electric, which had previously obtained their energy from the facility, explained the process. PGV is a geothermal energy conversion plant bringing steam and hot liquid up through underground wells. The hot liquid brine is not currently used for electricity. The steam is directed to a turbine generator that produces electricity. The exhaust steam from this turbine is used to vaporize an organic working fluid, which drives a second turbine, generating additional electricity. The condensed steam from the organic fluid heat exchanger is re-injected into the ground through re-injection wells along with the brine. This entire process is called binary cycle technology. Exopolitics also confuses its terminology by referring to a Hawaiian environmental group's opposition to a type of geothermal energy called enhanced geothermal energy. This process involves injecting pressurized water into the ground to modify the rocks below. Enhanced geothermal energy aims to drill deep wells to access areas of hot geologic activity and then pump water to that depth, allowing it to steam up from the heat of the earth and generate energy upon returning to the surface. PGV, on the other hand, does not use geothermal fracking. The facility was designed before the technology was developed and it would not be necessary. The location of PGV situated near a fault on a constantly erupting oceanic island with porous, volcanic terrain possesses all of the rare characteristics that usually make geothermal energy challenging to obtain. An article in the MIT Technology Review provided an overview of the possible benefits of geothermal fracking, which highlighted the importance of specific geological conditions. This also accounts for why PGV was constructed in its current location. The summary explains that the fundamental issue is that traditional geothermal power plants depend on a unique set of geological conditions. It is necessary to have high-temperature rock and a significant quantity of hot water or steam that can be efficiently extracted to drive steam turbines for electricity generation. Additionally, the rock structure must be porous enough to allow for the continuous circulation and reheating of water to maintain the power plant's operation. Despite the lack of factual evidence that fracking occurs on Hawaii's Big Island, the argument presented by ExoPolitics that the lower Puna lava flows were triggered by PGV's fracking relies on circular reasoning. The argument can be summarized as follows. 1. Fracking causes earthquakes. 2. Earthquakes occur at PGV, so PGV must be fracking. 3. PGV is located near the lava flows, and there were earthquakes near it when the flow started, proving that PGV caused the lava flows via fracking. While Snopes acknowledges that fracking causes earthquakes, another thing that causes earthquakes is volcanic activity, the very same activity that ExoPolitics is trying to blame on PGV. According to Snopes, it is not a proper way to use earthquakes as evidence that fracking caused a lava flow. Earthquakes are common on the Big Island due to their volcanic activity. The PGV plant is situated in a region prone to earthquakes because of its proximity to a primary fault system. The plant was built in this location so water could flow through the ground and contact the volcanically heated region below. Therefore, it is unsurprising that earthquakes are focused in the general area of PGV. However, using the plant's location as evidence that it caused earthquakes and lava flows is flawed reasoning. The fact that the PG plant is located in an area where earthquakes and lava flows are likely does not prove that it caused these events. Claims that the Lower Puna eruption in 2018 was caused by fracking are baseless, as fracking is not occurring on Hawaii's Big Island. Overall, Snopes argues that no credible scientific evidence links the PGV plant to the Lower Puna eruption. But why is the Rothschild family a target and believed to be orchestrating the Hawaii eruptions? Conspiracy theories surrounding the Rothschild family have been around since the 18th century. These theories perpetuate the anti-Semitic notion that Jews control the world's money supply due to the family's immense wealth. The Rothschilds have been linked to various dark money groups such as the Illuminati and the New World Order and are often accused of manipulating world governments for their gain. The family has been blamed for various events from initiating wars to funding the Holocaust and even assassinating U.S. presidents. In 2012, Skeptoid conducted a detailed investigation into the history of the Rothschild family. The Rothschilds have a history predominantly linked to money dating back to the 18th century. 
It has contributed to the widely held belief that Jews controlled the world's money supply. In reality, in Europe, anti-Semitic laws prevented Jews from owning property, forcing them to find another way to hide and manage money easily under the guise of working in finance and commerce. This unintended consequence of denying Jews property ownership forced them to become highly skilled in finance. The family's rise is mainly due to Maya Amschel Rothschild, born in a Jewish slum in Frankfurt in 1744. He became an apprentice at a small bank in Hamburg, learned the trade, and returned to Frankfurt to offer his banking services. He was energetic, clever, charismatic, and sought out wealthy clientele, and by the age of 40, he consolidated his most important business contact, the Landgrave William the Elector of Hesse. He installed each of his five sons as his agents in Europe's five major financial centers, which became the model for many powerful Jewish financiers who followed. One of Meyer's earliest transactions was the start of the Rothschild banking dynasty, which involved loaning William's money to the British crown to finance the British armies fighting Napoleon in Spain and Portugal in the Peninsular War. The Rothschild's wise investment of William's money paid off handsomely, marking the birth of the Rothschild banking dynasty. They became known for their wise investments and financial manipulation during times of war. However, World Wars I and II marked the end of this part of their business. Nazi Germany seized all of their assets, including palaces and artwork. The family had dispersed into many different businesses and philanthropic pursuits by Israel's creation. Conspiracy theories such as the claim that they funded the Holocaust often twist ordinary events into dark deeds, such as the story of Nathan Rothschild's supposed manipulation of the bond market during the Battle of Waterloo, which has been debunked. In 1825, during a crisis caused by the mismanagement of interest rates in England's unregulated banks, Nathan Rothschild purchased a large amount of gold from the struggling Bank of England at a discounted price. He sold it to the French National Bank. When the Bank of England faced a liquidity crisis due to depositors seeking their funds, they could borrow the same money from Nathan and avoid disaster. Despite numerous conspiracy theories claiming that the Rothschilds took over the Bank of England through this transaction, the reality is that they simply provided a loan that the Bank of England repaid. While a Rothschild descendant did serve on the Bank of England's board in later years, there is no logical basis for arguing that the 1825 transaction constituted a takeover. And now back to Hawaii, the only probable cause behind Hawaii's volcanic eruptions is the upwelling of magma from the Earth's mantle, which occurs due to a hot spot beneath the Pacific Plate. The Hawaiian Islands were formed from a series of volcanic eruptions caused by this hotspot. The magma generated by the hotspot rises towards the surface, where it can create fissures or vents in the Earth's crust. When the magma reaches the surface, it erupts as lava, which can flow over the landscape and create new land. The specific nature of Hawaii's volcanic eruptions is related to the composition of the magma, which is relatively low in silica and therefore flows easily. This leads to Hawaiian eruptions characterized by relatively gentle lava flows rather than the explosive eruptions that eject ash and pyroclastic material into the atmosphere. To sum up, while fracking has been known to cause earthquakes, there is currently no scientific evidence to support the claim that fracking is the cause of Hawaii's volcanic activity. The Hawaiian Islands were formed over millions of years by a hotspot in the Earth's mantle, and the ongoing volcanic activity on the islands is a result of this natural process. While it is essential to continue studying and monitoring the effects of human activity on the environment, in the case of Hawaii's volcanic eruptions, the evidence suggests that fracking is not to blame. Once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.